Hi, this is Al from elbowpepper.com. Spring has just started, but looking back at the winter, it's been exciting that I've been able to still do some gardening, and not just some experiments, but even uh, getting things ready for the outdoors. Uh, I've been able to continue to do composting through the cold, bitter winter months, and it's all been because of this JK270, this Jorform Tumbling Composter which is insulated and that's been allowing me to be able to continue to break down kitchen scraps and other types of plant material that I've been producing and now that spring starting I'm already having some nice finished compost that I'm, I've been able to put outside already in the one chamber I completely emptied it and this other one here is finishing off and it won't be long till I'm able to put it outside too but um, I wanted to share some observations about how this has worked through the winter time. I have a quick little video already on my channel showing how hot it got in the cold. And later on I'm going to show you an even higher record that I set using this. But first, it's important to understand how the whole process works as far as general composting, but then in regards to using it in one of these units and looking in the winter months, what can you expect? There have been times where it's been really hot, and I'm going to show you that. But there have been times when I've opened this up, and inside, uh, along the lid, there were ice crystals. This one side in particular, which I was allowing it to finish off, well, it just froze solid at one point because it had gotten so cold. So that is going to happen, especially if you're not constantly pumping it full of new, fresh materials that are high in nitrogen and everything that the bacteria need. Really, it's all about those bacteria processes and the other microbes involved as well. And it's important to understand how that cycling occurs. When you're at temperatures that are relatively lower in the Fahrenheit range between, say, 55 to 70, there are a certain group of bacteria that work at these low temperatures, and those are what really kickstart the process. These are referred to as psychrophilic bacteria, and they generate only a small amount of heat, but of course they're able to really thrive and do the work that first gets that process going. So as you start to hold in the heat because of how nicely this is insulated, it works really well, very quickly you'll find that the temperatures can start to rise when you have some nice fresh materials that you've just put in this. And before long you've passed up that 70 degree Fahrenheit range into more of the 70 to 100 degree range. And this is where the mesophilic bacteria, that's where they really thrive and that's where they do their job. They're really starting to work now, break down stuff, generating a lot of heat. And as they do so, the pile heats up even faster. So now that gets you to the third hottest phase where you have this other population of bacteria that just love heat, they thrive in that, and those are the thermophilic bacteria. Between 113 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit, that's where these guys are just loving life and they're breaking stuff down. All of the proteins, the fats, the carbohydrates that are in the different organic materials that you've dumped in there, that cellulose, they break that stuff down and they just chew right through it. It's a very fast process. A lot of the mass is reduced. And in three to five days, you can have a really, really hot pile that has now already depleted a lot of those, those uh, sources of energy. And it's already begun to cool down. So what happens is you start at a low temp. You start to build. You go from the psychrophilic to the mesophilic. Then you get to these thermophilic reactions. At that point, if you're not really able to supply the necessary constant amount of fresh materials into this, then it's going to slowly start to taper in temperature. And you'll still have a reaction going, but you won't be at that 140 or 150 degree range. But it'll start to go back down to more of the mesophilic range where you have a curing process that's starting to set in. And so you'll have like temperatures going up and then temperatures starting to come down. And it works pretty well, but you have to keep in mind that if it's negative 5 degrees outside, even though this is insulated and helps to keep all that heat in, 
still, uh, you could reach a point where the process just halts. If you're coming off of a, a very hot reaction and it's starting to cool and starting to get into more of a curing process and the temperatures go to record lows, well, this isn't able to keep up with that. You have to be realistic. And once, once that process breaks, once that cycle like, comes to a halt and you start to get to freezing temperatures, you can expect things to just, just pause. And that might happen, that might happen for weeks possibly. What happened to me was this side, which is what I'm now currently curing off, this side just got full all the way to the top and it stalled and I had to just wait for probably several weeks until the temperatures warmed up just enough and it didn't take much, maybe around 40 degrees uh, in the room here, the ambient temperature. And that was just enough for the, for the bacteria to, to thaw and, and to start to work again and start to generate heat. And before long, in a matter of days, this, the temperature in this spiked up again and it was, it was over 150 degrees. And it's really cool to be able to see how that works. But just keep that in mind that there are different variables that come into play and that you can't expect all winter long to be able to achieve 155 degrees. So I thought it would be cool to explain that, but uh, just keep in mind that when you're doing this type of composting, you're tumbling it, you're mixing in oxygen, and you're achieving the best type of, of composting that you could expect. It's an aerobic process that utilizes oxygen. So these bacteria, what do they produce? Well, in this aerobic process, what you're producing is carbon dioxide. And some will say, well, hey, isn't that... I mean, that's not really that good for the environment. Carbon dioxide, that's, that's a greenhouse gas, right? That may be true, but the alternative is instead of an aerobic process, an anaerobic process. If you don't have good oxygen in your pile, if it starts to get that kind of a stenchy uh, septic smell to it, you have a different type of process going on. You're not using the type of bacteria in the system that we just discussed. Instead, What's happening is uh, you're producing methane because you don't have oxygen available. So the, the gas that's produced is one that's actually, this methane is actually a lot worse for the environment. When that goes up into the atmosphere, methane is a much worse uh, greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. So rather than having your food scraps go into some pile and rot and, and make a bunch of methane, you can control the environment once your stuff breaks down using one of these supplying oxygen as you tumble it and producing carbon dioxide instead of methane and in that way it's better for the environment and of course you get all those great results uh, in regards to the nutrients that are now in your compost that are going to be ready for your plants you can put that out there and have some awesome amendments for your garden so enough about the process I just want to show you this one clip uh, it's similar to one I've done earlier, but this is the best record that I've been able to show uh, all through the winter, and I was really excited. I've been holding off on showing it. Let's now just take a second as we finish up this video and check out the record that I was able to set, my personal best, using one of these insulated tumblers. All right, are you ready for this? This is the biggest temperature difference I've seen so far. It's the middle of the winter. Got a lot of snow today. In this garage, it's 33 degrees Fahrenheit. And let's look and see what I have going on today. Hundred and fifty four degrees. So in my drawer form. 154 degrees but in the actual garage 33 degrees 120 degrees Fahrenheit difference yesterday the temperature in this thing was 30 degrees less and it was 20 degrees less than that the day before but right now it's obviously going through a very hot phase and you'll see temperatures go up temperatures go down this is the highest that I've ever even seen this. And it's on a day when it's 33 degrees inside of my garage. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Or actually, it's pretty hot. 
Wow.